So 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul is talking about a man he knew 14 years ago, uh, whether in the body or out of the body, he doesn't know, God knows, who was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. You know, I think of when I read that, you know, there's been books from like children and adults who say they had a dream or a vision and they went to glory to heaven. And then they write a book about it, real expressive, descriptive book. You know, I don't see that in God's word. If you ever have an experience like that, that you're sitting there talking about it at nauseum at length. Paul is saying, I saw, or this man saw stuff, which it isn't even lawful for man to utter. You know, us men with unclean lips to speak about what you, if, if you ever were blessed to see something like that, my interpretation of this is, uh, you know, you need to sit on that. You need to keep that holy because that was a beautiful thing you saw. And, uh, you know, we are still infected flesh with sin so uh, we, sh we shouldn't try to give utterance to such things you know what i mean uh that's just kind of um by the way in which i'm speaking about here though but um so he goes on paul goes on to say of such a one will i glory yet of myself i will not glory but in my infirmities for though i would desire to glory i shall not be a fool for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he sees me to be, or that he hears of me. Paul's saying, I don't want to um, puff myself up. I don't want to be seen greater than I am. <clears throat> He's trying to humble himself here. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So he's talking about this man who saw this cool stuff, and then he's kind of saying, and lest he be exalted, he's talking about himself. So, I mean, I think it's um, this man he's talking about, he's talking about himself, who, who went to glory. Um, I think that was when Paul was, one of the times he had stones cast at him. Uh, they probably kind of killed him in a certain degree, and he was, like, went going to glory. But the Lord brought him back, because the Lord had work for him to do. The Apostle Paul talks about many times beaten with stones, shipwrecked, lashed um, 39 times with the belt, uh, with the whip, whatever. Um, just beat up, tore up for the Lord said, uh, you will suffer many things for my namesake. And, and indeed he suffered. But uh, anyway, so I believe <clears throat> he's talking about himself here. Um, but he's so humble he doesn't even start it off saying, hey, me, Paul, had this thing. He's like, I knew a man kind of playing it off but then he circles around to the I pronoun he's like you know talking about so that I should not be exalted above measure so he could have boasted what this is kind of getting at he saw great things he could have shared to the people I Paul saw the throne room and this and that and the other thing and people might have you know started kind of worshiping following cult following on him he's like no I don't want that but he knew he's his propensity his potential to be prideful right so, uh, because of the abundance of the revelations that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure, so that I'm not puffed up thinking, wow, wow, look, I'm really special. The Lord really thinks I'm special to have shown me this. Um, you know, he understood that, it sounds like, in this language, that he received some kind of thorn in his flesh, something to keep him humble. Then he probably looking back was like you know this was because to keep me humble because i saw glory i saw heaven i might be tempted to just you know pull a brother aside and spew and just tell him what he saw and then people might be like paul you are special you are something you know what i mean you know what i'm getting at for this thing i besought the lord three times that it might depart from me paul was like lord i hate this thing i don't know what it was many people speculate it was maybe from getting the lashes maybe he had a back issue you know he was healing in his back, then he got lashed again. He was healing, then he was lashed again. Maybe it caused um, back pain or difficulty walking. There's another time Paul writes, he said, you know, this is from me. You see the manner in which I write with large letters. Maybe he had bad eyes, you know. Couldn't see too well. He had something. And he was asking the Lord three times. He's asking the Lord three times, saying, Lord, take this away from me. And he said unto me, the Lord said unto Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, Paul speaking, will I rather glory in my infirmities than that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
So, um, yeah, Paul asked that three times, Lord, I don't like this. It, it hurts. Take it away. Jesus spoke unto him in the red letters, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Guys, be encouraged with that word from Jesus' mouth. His grace is sufficient for us. Uh, when you're really weak, weary, struggling, Jesus says, my strength is made perfect in that weakness. So just imagine it's a, it's a correlation, right? There's a, um, there's a correlation here. As your strength plummets, you lean more on Jesus. Your strength actually in its potential and ability will increase. Isn't that amazing? Look at how Jesus takes care of us. When you're struggling, when you're on empty and beyond empty, and you're like, oh, Jesus, help me. Um, no worries. You're a prime candidate for the power of God to move powerfully. Jesus Christ promised it. He said, my grace is sufficient. What does it mean to have something be sufficient? It is enough. And so Paul gets that, you know, looking back here, and he's like, most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, you know? And by the Holy Spirit, he teaches us things like that. You may have heard me a few times, guys, in videos where I speak of something really terrible and wretched, and I go, but praise Jesus regardless. You know, and I mean it. Who cares? Like, when, when things hurt, I'm like, praise Jesus regardless. What else can you do? I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to um, curse. You know? No, no. I'm just going to praise Jesus because um, there's many times in Scripture it talks about you ought to do that in times of question and need. Praise the Lord. Uh, Paul says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. He says, I take pleasure in infirmities and sickness, right? Reproaches, when people reproach you, hate you, in necessities, when you need stuff and, needs, and want, right? In persecutions, when you're hated for, for Christ Jesus' sake, for that Holy Spirit in you, in distresses for Christ, anything that's troublesome and bothersome, right? For when I am weak, I am strong, and he takes pleasures in it. It makes me think of when I had the coronavirus, you know, a um, couple of Christmases ago. Did I take pleasure in it? No, I wasn't quite there yet, you know? I wish I would have been more joyful in it, but it was very miserable and terrible, and the Lord's hand is very heavy on me. But I aspire to grow in this regard, so... Yeah, guys, be encouraged when you're on empty. And the other thing I'll say about this is, you know, if you're dealing with something, like Paul, something that he was dealing with, whatever it was, you know, I think of this as I grow, and I'll end with this, as I grow in my walk with King Jesus, I think of, like, certain areas or propensities of um, either distraction or just not having my mind focused right, or any type of sin or weight of sin. Um, and we all have different things, right? It might be overeating be anger, rage, whatever it might be, you know, different things. As I grow in my walk and as I realize maybe certain things that still are kind of somewhat of a weight to me or distraction to me or something where I'm like, I'm not excellent in that yet. I was thinking about this today. That's why I chose this scripture. And I was thinking about that and I'm like, man, Paul asked three times that it be removed. And I've asked, you know, I feel like millions of times with different things in life, like, Lord, I don't like this. I want to be better. You know, like, like Kobe Bryant, you know, early in his career was talking about, I think uh, he wasn't excellent in defense, so he really worked on that. And then he became like an all-defensive player, you know, every year. He turned a weakness into a strength. That's kind of how I see things in life. I'm like, if, I, if I'm deficient in something, I want to make that like one of my strengths. Anyways, and there's things in life where I look and I'm like, you know, I, I can do well. I can see progress for sure. But then I'm like, dang, I wish I was crushing it and just, just like perfect in that regard. Uh, be encouraged because Jesus Christ is perfect. And when you realize, you know, as you grow and you strive <clears throat> and you're still not there yet, you just, Jesus becomes that more brilliant reality, like the, like the midday sun where you're just like, Jesus, this is why I love you so much because I want to be like you. I want to be holy, but I can't fully do that until, um, until we're glorified and stuff like that. But it's like, but Jesus, you can and you did and you are and you always have been that perfect man. Um, and as we have been crucified in Christ, we are alive in Jesus. So we can share that in a certain realm, in a very real, eternal, spiritual realm. We're, we're perfected in Christ. We are good. <clears throat> and when we die or when we're caught away, uh, for those of us who won't die, like uh, that's going to be a reality one day. But uh, we're still in space and time, right? So we haven't experienced it yet. 
So yeah, be encouraged regardless. When you're striving, you're growing, but you're still not there. You're at, instead of like a 30%, you're at like an 80, 85, 90, 95%, but that's about it. Um, that, that one day is coming where you're glorified, you're perfected, you are given crowns from Jesus, awards at the Bema Seat Judgment, <clears throat> at the uh, Marriage Supper of the Lamb. You're perfected and made like Jesus when he says, when I come, um, we will be like him. We will know him as we are known. He knows us perfectly. We're going to know him perfectly. It's going to be this consolidation of just um, be encouraged by that word, right? So I pray that <clears throat> that blessed you guys. A little uh, 2 Corinthians 12. Amazing thing. So keep yourselves humble just like Paul did in this example. Keep coming to the Lord daily and specifically <clears throat> for uh, your prayers and your needs. And perhaps he'll remove something or bless you in a certain way. And uh, perhaps not, but you keep coming to him in faith, he may. And if he doesn't, be encouraged. One sweet day, you're going to be uh, perfect. So, oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, please consider sharing this video with someone who you think it may bless. And God willing, uh, tune in tomorrow. I will be back with another video. So, have a peaceful night. God bless you guys.